Hi, stream 313, and today I'm feeling miserable. I have this cold, and it sucks. <laughs> the worst part is not being able to sleep very well. 313, yeah. So, starting up the stream, I'm going to keep it simple today, since I'm not feeling very well. I'm just going to work on refactoring today. Breaking up unit test suites into smaller pieces, making reusable test helper functions. And trying not to um, get even more sick by not streaming as long for a while, I think. Dial says 302. Oh, I could fix that. Let me fix that really quick. There's always something. 313. Uh, refactoring. Done. And I'll probably have to remember to go and fix the title on the VOD, too. <laughs> Thank you, T.S. Jost. Need to have that checklist thing. I'm glad to see that my bot is still running. All right. I probably don't need to even run the test environment for the game today. We're just going to be doing refactoring, so... I'm going to begin just by making sure all the unit tests pass. And now we're waiting to see what did I what did I change that would require this to rebuild? This should be um clean. I don't know. That's still technically true except for the um notebook page is wrong. Notebook page. Let's clean it up a little bit. Let's, refact let's refactor the t t today message. Refactoring his, the um, unit test fixtures of his game today. There we go. Edit com today that. Better. All right. Starting up the stream, done. I think I'll start with a break up, breaking up executor unit tests fixtures into various pieces. All right. Let's run them all. This takes about two minutes. <laughs> Call in sick to work and do some witness instead. <laughs> but streaming is my work right now. So that would be a little bit of a contradiction, wouldn't it? I really should just try to get some more sleep. Maybe I'll call off the afternoon stream and just do the morning stream. Or maybe just shorten the two streams. That that might be a better option. Just shorten these two streams. Take a nap, maybe. I don't feel like BSing while I'm waiting for this to these tests to run. I guess I don't need really need to wait for them to run. I can start looking at the executor. And maybe start to collect a list of uh executor use case groups. Looking from the top. What's execution entry? Oh, okay. So there's the um, command execution publish subscribe. Or subscriptions. Oh, look who's joining me. The beast. He's ascending his tower. His tower of cat power. Need help? If he needs it, this see there he comes. There he comes. Head he makes it on his own. 
Hello. Hi. Meow. <laughs> Look, looking over in my direction. All right. That was an intense climb. He doesn't have a whole lot of strength in his back legs anymore. He's old. So he's doing, a, it's mostly like a forehand, a four paw grip. Hey there, Nui. How are you doing? But I'm glad you're here to join me, kitty. Yeah. <laughs> or cat. Like old like Tim. <laughs> okay. Going back to uh, outline mode here. Hey there, A squared. A squared pi, that's right. And Rasubaka, hi. All right, publish subscribe is, is this category. Hey, Phantasmex. Hi. Everybody's like piling in. Welcome, friends. Looks like I have some broken unit tests, though. Oops. Oh, did I add this at the end of last stream and not finish it? Maybe. Wait, what is that? Zero there? Wait, this is broken. Why is there a zero there? And you guys can't even see that. Why is there a zero here? Who did that? That's not even valid. There's no such thing as entity zero. <laughs> Say hello to everybody. Uh, I'm just going to remove it. I don't even know why that's there. I think I know why the test is broken. I think we did a zero check at some point. So that would make sense that now now we're not we're not done looking things up for entity zero. All right, let's check that in. Before we refactor, we um remove bad test code. It uh, there can be no entity zero. I did play a little bit of Dwarf Fortress after um, late night last night, but um, it's um, it's mostly because I'm sick that I'm feeling miserable. <laughs> um, the next stream I do, if I do it for Dwarf Fortress, I'm going to be breaking through an aquifer. So I researched how to do that. I tried to do it last night, but then I messed it up. And uh, I know what I did wrong, and I'm ready to try again. Breaking through an aquifer in Dwarf Fortress is really useful because um, then it unlocks a lot more areas of the uh, potential embark sites. Shit, you are getting well. You must. <laughs> Thank you for that, TS Just. You guys cheer me up. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. Back to um, looking at the outline. How was that? Was that on a scale of 1 to 10? I would rate myself um, maybe a 6 for that Yoda speech. Improve? You must practice? <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm, I'm not nailing it today. It's my throat. I'm going to blame it on this cold. 
What's the cat doing? He's just sitting there looking. He's like looking off towards the bathroom for some reason. Yoda? Yeah. TS just redeemed it. I can I can test out and practice my Yoda impersonation. Difficult being green green it is. Beware. Beware beware the dark side. <laughs> Um, 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 yeah. It doesn't sound good today. I think it's the cold. Right new configuration. Set next configuration. Do not set. So. What is this? Ign this one's an outlier. These are all config based except for that one. Hey there, Protopoly. Or Protopoly. Okay, there are a lot of configuration-based ones, so let's um, add that. Um, cluster configuration. Proto-poly was correct. I think it's user 335 who says protopoly. Sometimes. Maybe me too. Ignore committed entries with no command. Let's look at the details of this one. I don't understand what this test is even... How would this check for anything? There's no asserts. This doesn't make sense. Oh, maybe it's built into this um, mock here? There's no, there's no asserts. This is, a bro this is broken. I'm removing it. It's stupid. Stupid test. No more. Oh, wow. Congratulations. That's a big life event. March 3rd, huh? That's cool. Yeah, congrats. Practicing dancing? I hope so. You're, you're required to dance, right? Turn 40? That's another big milestone, I guess. Although kind of an arbitrary one, I suppose. I don't yeah, I don't know about about numerical coincidences like that. Um events are like like real life events are getting married, having kids, getting your first job, retiring, that kind of thing. Humans like multiples of 10 because we have 10 fingers, maybe 10 toes. Yeah, there's a lot of configuration based ones here, right? Restore from back, okay. Okay, now pr player creation is another one. Player creation. Set reset, so password reset. Uh, cha password cha changing passwords. Why did it insist on capitalizing that? I don't know. Is counting easier in your fingers? Yeah. I don't know what you meant by that, T.S. Just. <laughs> I lost you there. Okay, profile changes. Profile. Changing profile. Just dumb with their units. Uh, I think we're just kind of set in our, too set in our ways. Hey there, Ellie. No. Okay. Then there's just there's uh, the counter to player creations is um account deletion. Yeah. Let's not even that we use weird units like feet and yards, but let's not even bring into the the fact that the British use weird units like furlongs. And Fortnites. <laughs> Let's see, log in. Okay, so lo logging in. 
A lot of login tests here. The French did it right. How long is a fortnight? Is it like two weeks or something? How long is a fortnight? 14 days. So it's two weeks and two days. Oh, no. Can't do math today. Sick, remember? Two weeks. Exactly. So I, my initial guess was correct. It's two weeks. What did the French do right? Let's see. Client report add mod. These are, these are random. Client report would be, I guess, let's say it's cluster... Status. They invented the... Oh, did they invent the metrics units? <laughs> no, that's Fork Knife, not Fortnite. He's playing Fork Knife. Okay, add mod... Oh, so the, this is all the ticketing system. So in-game ticketing. Or ticketing system. Ticket system. Uh, mail. Um, cluster. Yeah, I guess um, game snap. A uh, snap. State snapshots. Uh, player uh, account. Backup and restoration. That's mail. Mail related. Uh, metrics. Or metrics and diagnostics. Stats. Easy. Okay, so then any component system. And that, whoops, that might, I might want to break that up into even smaller pieces. Stayed up until 2 a.m. last night writing boilerplate code for procedural generation of galaxies in your mud engine last night. You're exhausted. Congratulations, Ellie Null. That sounds fun. Space mud. At some point, I want to have procedural generation in this mud as well. I think what I would do is have procedurally generated mazes. Système international. A moo, not a mud, you mean? So there are a lot of ECS tests, right? In fact, probably the rest of them are. So I need to divide ECS up, don't I? Okay, not all of them are. Let's skip the ones that are obviously ECS for now. Mask change results in... Oh, so this is... Um, player name masking. Hey there, Mini Hate. Uh, I, got a, I got a bad cold right now. I... My definition of bad would be it interferes with my sleep. So I'm not sleeping well last night or the night before. I'm hoping to, to get to get over to get well soon. So other than that, things are okay. I had yeah, couldn't sleep last night, had this cold, and then my wife is freaking out about the um Chinese coronavirus. She's saying like, well, if things go really bad, we could always get into the motorhome and, you know, just stock up on water. I'm like, it's it's not the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> hey there, Mike and Principal. How are you today? How is your foot? Yeah, it's nowhere near as bad as you're feeling with your foot. I just have a cold. But it's a cold that's interfering with sleep. And you've had trouble with that, with um, having trouble sleeping with your foot, right? It's the worst when you just can't rest. 
I hope uh, I hope the pain is less. I hope I hope you're getting better. And let's give Mike a shout out. You should check out his channel. He is an awesome game developer. He's made a game called Thrusty Ship. You should try it out. It's a it's a very um, challenging. I would call it um, an arcade puzzler. Or it defies, what do we say? It defies genre definition. Uh, Mike slipped on the ice. Like, compound fracture. And what's, what, was, what really sucks is that, um, like I, I, I said, I hope you're taking enough pain meds. And he's, he says he can't take opioids because it knocks him out. So, like, that's a double oof there. So he's in a lot of pain. Okay. Oh, this is the bot related stuff, right? So a uh, golem, which is the chat bot, chat into a uh, Twitch, Twitch integrations. You still with us, Mike? The best you've ever done has been on opioids. Getting much better? Oh, okay. We're all rooting for your recover speedy recovery. You can sleep? I envy you. <laughs> yeah, some people it affects really... Um, I mean, the, some people are affected by opioids in different ways. It not knocks them out, makes them loopy. That kind of thing. <laughs> move, move to the canaries. Now more than ever, I think Mike would like to avoid the ice if he as much as he can, right? Chat. Why do I have a test for chat? Okay, well, chat uh, in um chat. Sure. Um sure, dialogues. Dialogues is a good one. Okay, so two two factor Authentication is all these ones. This is all bot related stuff. Account linking. Uh, or maybe that's part of the golem stuff. Yeah. Hydrocore. Hydrocodone allows you to tunnel vision concentrate. That's handy. All right. Should I have a separate test framework just for migration, maybe? A lot of this is migration is entity component system related, though. Okay, so uh, entity component system is too big. So let's break that further down. So I'll just delete that bullet and go back up to where the first ECS related thing and then think deeper here. I guess this create destroy entity would be um, entity management. So create, destroy, modify. Okay, and then maybe some special tests for in for items in inventory. Uh, temporary entities. Actually, that could go into entity management, including temporary, temporaries. Wow, there are. This makes sense that there are this many different use case groups because this file is um, almost 10,000 lines long. Serious need for refactoring. That's what we're, what we're doing today. Uh, hey there, Endorn. How's the witness been treating you? Okay, I guess we'll have my great... Um, Migration, so, um, data migration. 
player profiles there. Yeah, it's up here. Uh, changing profile. And there's also special, a special section for um, uh, player name masking. Yeah. Let's see. Missing attributes. Okay, there's this, there's this stuff about um, char uh, character handling when they're lo on login, log out. What's a short word for that? Logged out player. Logged out character handling. That's this marked gone and such. Uh, I had something for dialogues, right? Yeah. Two factor auth. Um, policy consent stuff, maybe. So, um, policy consent. Oh, you did you get to the record player, Andorn? I got into well, I won't say in, in, unless you um, let me know that you actually f got to the record player. I don't want to spoil anything about the witness. So Endorn and I have been playing the witness, which is a puzzle game. You solved it. Well, good for you. I got to. I don't know. It felt like midway through maybe 60% through where you get to the um the little little mini maze where you um you have to solve you have to find which puzzle to do first and then if you you're if you go the wrong way the walls spring up in front of you that's as far as i got an interview with the canary islands company this morning you don't think it went too well you never know mike until you hear back from them the big maze thing yeah so i did i did i tried the big maze thing try twice and then i got tired I, I stayed up too late doing that. One thing I learned about the experiment of game streaming is that it, it makes me stay up too late. <laughs> Took you a while to solve it. It was fun, though. So, man, maybe I shouldn't spoil it for people who haven't played it, though. I thought that that, that area of the game was pretty fun. This is all... Some of this is, is um, migra migration-related... Some of it's um, marked gone and all that stuff. Uh, container. That's part of items and inventory, right? And that's part of any. any okay, this is this is a good set. How many do I have here? Twenty four. So I have twenty four subdivisions of this file to make. So, will I stream it later today? Probably not. I I need to get some rest. Well, thank you, Mike. Gonna go play some Thrusty Ship. If you guys want to play Thrusty Ship too, there's a free demo that you can find through Mike's stream or through Steam. You check it out. Okay, now how am I gonna split everything up here? You've hidden the demo. Hold on, hold on a second. I need to. I need to take a quick break to blow my nose. <laughs> Uh, give me, um, 30 seconds, please, Jeeves. I'll be right back. I can't say that I enjoy nose blowing. It's more of like that I don't enjoy having a stuffy nose and I need to fix that. All right. Yeah, I have a, a, I'm woefully lacking here in helper methods. The helper methods are less, there's, there's only six of them. <laughs> okay, so 
that's part of the problem is we don't have hardly any helper methods for 24 different subcategories of use case use use case groups uh i think i'm just going to establish a um just like i have coordinator test let's have an executor test why did i put it at that level come on man you're killing me new folder at this level executor tests Okay, and then like a different coordinator test, I had a common. Let me do that. Yeah, like this. Only well, at the executor level. And we'll, re we'll remove that from the... Oh, begin bot. Hey, how are you? Begin bot is been, has been doing a lot of Python stuff. You should check out his stream if you're interested in Python. And some cloud AWS stuff. Some automation. It's He's also a fun guy to watch. Hey there, Panda Person TV. TTV. How are you? I'm uh, looking at my uh, list of files that my build system for my game is um, uh, it requires. And I'm um, basically breaking up a huge test fixture today, which is almost 10,000 lines long i it's gone way too long since i refactored it i'm refactoring into these 24 different use case groups um this component called executor is is grown too big and i'm splitting it up now um it's responsible for making changes to the state of my game uh i have a i have a bad cold panda person but i'm you know i'm, I'm just holding it all together <laughs> if you're new to my stream i have a short youtube video here that explains what the stream is about or you can just jump right into the test environment for my game that I've been building. Um, I guess I can I can bring that up right now. Um, I can do this actually from Firefox. That way, it, it's a it looks more like what you would see. So here I am in the game. It looks like I'm surrounded by enemies. When I, when when have I ever been safe in my own game? Let's do some combat here. So this is a MUD, multi-user dungeon. It's a um, multiplayer online game. It's um, got some graphical elements, but it's mostly going to be text-based. That guy down there is an NPC named George. And um, he, should, he should be hanging out up here um, defending me, but um, his script is broken right now. Love the stream intro video, do you? Yeah, yeah. It, uh, I think, helps cut down on the repetition. So I could just say, well, if you haven't seen it before, here's a really, really quick thing you can watch. But I'm, I'm almost okay answering questions. Yeah, Graphic Mud. So it's a custom game engine, and it has an Ultima feel about it because it's inspired by the Ultima games because I played those a lot when I was a kid. Very much inspired to try to write my own, and I've been trying to do this for years. And um, this is sort of like the third or maybe fourth incarnation of my attempt to make my own game like Ultima. And uh, doing it live here on Twitch. So because it's online, there are um, two big pieces to the game. The game server, I guess you'd call it, is running in the cloud. And the front end of the game is running in your web browser. So we use JavaScript for the front end, and the back end it's C++ with Lua scripts. And I throw in Python here and there to help automate like deployment and synchronization and you know other tools other other tools needs thank you for the follow all right so yeah let me know if you have any questions this is actually the live production environment so if you were to jump into the game now and go through the first magic door you'd be here in the world with me oh i'm being raided by mr halsey hey it's a it's a nice day to, to be raided. How are you doing, Mr. Halsey? I just got done explaining the, my little intro, but I will um, spam the commands again. There we go. There's some command spam for you. I'm working on this game mostly today. I'm going to be refactoring, so not adding any new features or any content, but just going through cleaning up some code. Very important aspect of code is testing, so I have... Um, 
a huge test framework for part of my game server called the Executor, and it's 95,000 or 9,500 lines long, which is way too long. Target for me is usually under 1,200 lines, anything bigger than that, and it's grown too large and unwieldy. This is way, way too large. The big problem is that exe the Executor, its job is to commit change requests to the game, and so anything that needs to be um, changed in the game has to go through the Executor. So there are just a lot of very disparate kinds of things the Executor ends up overseeing. And uh, here's the list that I came up with. So and everything from the in-game chat to email to logging in, password reset, um, Twitch integrations, metrics, data migration, all, all this stuff. Items in inventory, um, all of it goes through the Executor at some point. So um, my first attempt to break up and refactor my test for the Executor will be to try to divide it, the tests into these 24 categories. And if that might actually be enough, but I kind of want to go a step further because if the um, I look at any individual test, there's a lot, a lot of code here to actually do one test. And a lot of it is boilerplate. So like this, for example, is how you create an item in my game. So if we create another item, you know, another component of an item, that you see a lot, a lot of these um, words are repeated. So we're, we're doing create entity, we're creating components, create components, create components. And um, so a lot of this boilerplate can be reduced. The only thing really different between a lot of this is the type of the component and maybe some of the details. Um, the other thing is the, uh, a lot of the tests have common setups. So I made, you know, this funny little test item called fidget spinner is probably over in this other test too. Yeah, look at that. Exactly the same code. So if we replace that with one line called like create fidget spinner test or something, I could um, remove the redundancy between that block and this block down here, for example, and make it one line and make it you know more obvious what we're doing. Okay, Mr. Halsey, thank you for the raid. Enjoy your coffee. Lurking is perfectly fine and good. So I have a bad cold today. I don't know how long I'll be streaming. I uh, do have another time slot in the afternoon for me. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. All right. I, um, I took this file out of the circulation in the build system, and I'm planning to have that set up. So what I'm going to first do is just rename this file to... Actually, we're just going to move it. So cop, let me just copy that and paste it into the new folder I made here. Paste, and we'll rename it to common.cpp. And then delete the old one. And then let's um, copy common CPP to common HPP. Because the parts of this file that will be shared between all 24 fragments of it will need to be um, defined in the header that's shared between them. Copy and paste them three more times. Yeah. <laughs> Only 10,000? It's 10,000 lines of code in this file. Well, 9,500, right? Uh, as far as number of tests, it's probably a couple hundred. So once I subdivide it into 24 groups, each group should be pretty manageable. Yeah, we want to, as far as much as we can, preserve the unique parts of the tests and get rid of the redundant parts. Redundancy is, is our enemy. All right, so for this file... Uh, how do I want to com... The file is common.hpp. This... Okay. I'm going to steal a little bit of writing. I don't feel like English today. Okay, yeah. I like how it, what I did here. Let me update the copyright. This module declares the base fixture used to test the executor class. The fixture is a subclass to test various aspects. Actually, let's 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 improve that. The test various groups of use cases, including, and I'm gonna pull directly from here and paste and go up the line here, space like that. There we go. Fix that line. All right, good. This, I need to fix by doing that. And um, 
I really only want to declare, but not define all the common framework stuff. So, for example, the fake timekeeper just declare, but not define all this stuff. So, that. And yeah, all of these things are just declare only and not define. And definitions go into the CPP file. But C plus plus is fun. All right. And we're doing good. Okay. Um feedback. So again, just the declaration. Uh, that can move by, that can be in the CVP file only. We don't even need to declare that. And then I want to remove, um, I don't, no, I don't want to remove the namespace. I actually think I want to define a, right, an executor test namespace. Yeah. And then like this one did, um, in addition to all of our mocks, we want to define the base test fixture. So, oh, actually, this is the same, right? Only the com. Okay, I'm going to take the comments. This is a base class for the concrete executor test test fixtures, providing common setup and tearing up for each test. So that goes. This needs to be inside the namespace too. So. I'm going to take this and indent it. Okay, and then um, we need to find a home for all these tests. Actually, I know what I want to do. I want to have like a legacy that we want to um, have everything start in and then just um, take things out into the various 24 groups until it's empty again. So that means I'll have under executor tests a legacy. And let's take common CPP and rename it to legacy. All right, and then the CP the HPP file ends there. And again, um, only declare but not define all the methods, setup, teardown, that kind of thing. You know what? Another thing that sucks when you get a cold, when when you get pressure in your ears and you can't get rid of it. <laughs> like I had to drive my kids to school and I, you know, part of that drive is going downhill a ways and then you start to feel that pressure build up and you can't get rid of the pressure. It's the worst, you know? All right. So that we can put on one line, right? Okay, this is looking better. Uh, we can collapse all these blank lines away. Same here. Hey there, Toulouse. Hope you're doing well. Okay, and then with, with some of the recent late raids, I didn't wave to some other people. So, hey there, Hayes Anderson. Mr. Halsey, who's now lurking. And begin bot who rated also. Dash Alua, yes, that's I have a dash Alua in my code to make it so that I can change the game logic without having to um, rebuild the server program. Very very convenient. It has some drawbacks too. I got a cold to loose, but fortunately it's not transmittable through the internet, so you should be safe. <laughs> All right, that's the header file common CPP. Uh, I just kind of want to steal from this. For the implementation of the base fixture used to test the executor. Yeah. Update my comment. My um, copyright. So that reference... Is that correct? IntelliSense is thinking. Okay. I think so. 
Okay. Yeah, you're not going to get a virus from me through this through the internet. Yeah, but you wouldn't want to be around me in real life. You'd probably get the cold as well. I got it from my kids. It sucks. I forgot to mute my phone. Executor tests. Okay. So these are the definitions of those, right? So I don't need to um, include these declarations anymore, but we get down to here, we have to put do that colon, colon, get rid of the virtuals, get rid of the overrides. Same thing here, mock journal. We're gonna put mock journal colon colon in front. And out dent. And so here, 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 and here, and here, and here. All of those paste. Go to the beginning of the line, remove the virtual, go to the end. Okay, I can't do that because some of them don't have override on the same line. So I'm just going to look for the word override. Like that and just hit control D a few times. Getting rid of the overrides. Delete, delete. All right. And then out then all this stuff, right? Um, squiggly means I did something wrong. Why is it telling me that's, that these are wrong? Oh, probably because there's an extra bracket. Yeah, get rid of that bracket. Okay, so feedback goes here. Include the print to as it is. Okay. So, right, we need to pull in the common stuff too. So that's this stuff, right? So this, oh, I probably didn't get the, um, Name of this class correct. Yeah, there. Common. So this is common, common. And then common in front of all of these, right? This is where the um, shared helper methods and the base class for all of the fix fixture fragments will be. And then again, we're getting rid of all the virtuals. Because that virtual only goes in declarations. Okay, and then we're done, right? So, get rid of that. That's the end of the namespace, and then delete to the end of the file, and we should be good for this file. Only, doesn't look like it's that. Okay, I missed, maybe messed up here. I think IntelliSense might be a little challenged until I, um... I guess I can do that now. I can go to CMake here and do, um, what is it? Configure? Configure. And then IntelliSense will probably pick things up. Okay. So we're looking good. Legacy needs to be updated though. So this is going to have all of the actual tests in it. So here we need to include common. Actually, in the CVP needs to include common as well. All right, and then um, I'll have to clean up these includes too. <laughs> it's always challenged. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Okay, so we can get rid of everything down to the actual test now. All right, and then in here, let me see what I did in these various coordinator subdivisions. Oh, right, we had to derive, we had to make der derive classes for the... Um, fixtures. So same thing here. So name space executor tests. And then in there, this is a test fixture for these tests providing. Yeah. All right. So this is executor test legacy. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to replace globally, replace that everywhere and then get rid of these redundant, these, um, these ones that don't, shouldn't be there. And then go all the way down, indent everything, and save. And then this should actually, this, hopefully this should build. Unless I missed something. Is that a cat? Yeah. You want to 
I need to probably pet the cat. I need to get up and stretch anyway. It's been 50 minutes. So Wallace is building. Oh, it already... We're too late. It already stopped building. Anyway, I need to pet, pet the cat anyway. And this, you can make me do by redeeming the pet the cat reward, but this one I'll give you guys for free. Hold on. He always appreciates any kind of attention he can get. Okay, what did I mess up? Compute password hash already has a body. Compute password hash. Already has a body. Okay, where? Oh, yeah. That would be a problem. We just want to declare it, not actually define it. I don't do push-ups, TS Just. I, I think those are it's silly dev streamers do that. It might be because I'm... What? I'm not a boomer. I'm the next generation after boomer. <laughs> Soon people will be making fun of my generation, too. Let's see. Get my last modified time. What is... Okay. What is it telling me here? Line 121? Oh, it has the word virtual in it. Mock journal in front. I can do push-ups, but I think it's silly to do them when uh, viewers want me to do them. I think it's too much like you know, dance, streamer, dance, or, you know, like, um, what's the word? I think it's, I think in some ways it's a little bit demeaning. Just make people do, to do things like that. I don't mind if it's like petting the cat, something that, like, it benefits the cat. But what happened here? I don't know. What, what, what's the right, what's, what's the right reason? I love my cat, but I don't love doing push-ups. Maybe that's why. <laughs> Maybe I don't really have a good excuse. That's what it comes down to. What happened here? Oh, the d redefinition of the default argument. Um, not not with push-ups. <laughs> Now, if this was a fitness stream, sure. Okay, Boomer Yoda. <laughs> you see what it did in the um, in the overlay up there? <laughs> That's a picture of Boomer from the original um, Battlestar Galactica. That's my little joke that I made just by just by my little old self. Okay, everything is building, so if I do um, this now, it'll have moved to Executor Test Legacy. Hey there, Jackamus. Let's get, get some waves in here. Jackamus, hi, and then Exeter, and then Radon 90, and then Kalak. Hi. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty... Pretty much under the weather today, I got a, a cold. One good thing about the executor test is it runs pretty quickly. It only takes three second, 3.8 seconds to run it, even though there are a lot of tests. It's, it's really it's just the, the, the sheer number of lines of code is, is too big. All right, so now the goal is to get rid of all the tests that are in legacy. Actually, before I do that, let me um, try to remove these pound these defines that I don't need. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this tactic where I comment them all out and then look to see what I actually need. So I actually need string, which I don't even have included. Size T is technically in standard def. Okay, what else? 
vector shared pointer raft. So vector shared pointers in memory raft isn't even included. Include raft raft. Uh, which raft class? Log entry. Ah, uh, what else? What subscription? Oh, it's probably a, mem uh, a field of this one. Yeah. Subscription, there it is. JSON value. We need JSON. Wait a minute. This is not even the right place. It should go there. Okay, what else do I need? That might be it. I'm not seeing any other types that I haven't seen yet. So I guess that's it. I can probably just build that. It's not necessarily going to detect if I missed it, though. Wait a minute, what? What? Timekeeper is not a member of Realms. Uh, I beg to differ. Oh. That's in a header. Uh, yeah. Timekeeper. Timekeeper. It's not even in the list. Uh, okay. Load. Timekeeper. Are there other Realm server classes that I forgot to include? I guess journal. Yeah, this one. Realm server colon colon, right? Executor. Yeah, we should probably include the thing we're testing. That would make sense. Commands. Components. Okay, yeah, actually, we're going to need a lot of these. Components, players, ticketing, mail, queue, metrics. Interesting. I don't include them directly. I should, though. Wait. Was it ECS? Yeah, that's right. So technically it goes there, right? And then uh, what was the next? Metrics, mail queue, okay. Mail queue, I don't have metrics though. Ticketing players configuration. Ticketing players configuration. Do I have key names? No, so I don't need key names. Game constants. What's in game constants? I might be pulling in, no, not in the header file. So that probably don't need that. Do I need map? I do. I do need map. What about the hash stuff? No, I don't need any of those includes. I do need the G-test one, that's important. What about future or promise? Nope. Base 64. Nope. Set. Nope. String extensions. Nope. And file. Yes. Okay. So those are the minimum headers that this one should include. And then common CPP, common HPP, and then as many things as we actually need, but no more. 
So just collapsing everything. Actually, that's not good, and I have, I have to expand everything. I looked inside. So this one does need base64 and the hash functions. Oh, which ones? It needs HMAC. Does it need HMAC? Yes, needs HMAC, needs PVKDF2, and SHA2. SHA2, so it needs these ones. What about SHA1? Nope, doesn't need SHA1. TOTP? Nope. Uh, don't, we don't need GTest because we get that through common. We're not pulling anything. Actually, we do our pull, we are pulling these macros, so probably we should include it. Future or promise? No. Map? Uh, I'm gonna say technically yes because we make one here and it's not in a declaration. Shared pointer? Mm, nope. Um, or there's make shared though, so that we need it for. JSON. Do we use it inside if any code? Yeah, I do it there. So, do include it. Commands, yes. Configuration, no. Executor, not directly. I'm thinking we, well, we might use that. Actually, let's just remove it for now. I can add it back if I need it. Don't need this. Do need the key names. Why is that showing up with the squiggly now? Yes, it does if I include... Oh, key names, yes. Um, mail, Q, no. Ticketing, no. Players, no. Set. No. String extensions. No. File. Yes. Vector. Not the, That's in the declaration, so I don't need it there. All right. And then legacy. I think I'm just going to keep it all here. Still builds. If it builds, then I'm going to... Um, make this the first step in the in the refactoring so we're setting up that it's got its own folder now and everything starts in legacy so um make make a folder for executor tests okay now to start picking it apart so so i guess we'll call it subs for the first for the first one so call it subs executor test subs and and in subs this is um oh it shouldn't have it should, it should, it, that's this should just be called legacy this is subs shubs <laughs> Uh, okay. So there is an there's also a subs test for um Oh, was I not done refactoring this? Oh. Oh, I'll have to get back to that one. Yeah, let's just let me just pull one of, one of these comments out. This module contains the unit tests of the executor that have to do with command execution subscriptions. And yeah. All right, so this would be subs. And um
it would probably be faster just to delete everything and pull in the ones that are sub sub related, right? So there we go. And then pull in the ones that are subs related from legacy. So collapse everything and let's look. So subscribe, unsubscribe. There we go. Those two, right? Pull those out and paste them here. What else? Might be subscription related. That might be it, actually. That one's small. Unless I want to pull mobilize into it. I'm going to call, I'm going to say mobilize as part of configuration. Okay, so I'm done with these. These just say subs in them. Build. Hmm. Okay, next. Cluster configuration. Uh and con config. There we go. And then so Easier just to take subs and duplicate that and make that config. Config. Had to do with cluster configuration. Oh, probably I can remove all of the various includes here, right? So need memory and commands. Uh, raft log entry. Actually, don't even have that include. Raft log entry. And that's it. No other includes needed. Okay, and then config. Um... Yeah, so delete all of these. This is config, and then pull in from legacy the configuration-related ones. So that's mobilize, write new configuration, set configuration, all these. I should, um, I should do one more thing. I should separate the words with underscores like I decided to do from now on. So these are all configuration-related. Down to there. So X, control X and then go to config and paste. And then go through here and make these config. Okay, and then decide what headers I actually need. Need raft. And memory and commands at least. So in addition to those, what do I need? JSON. What else? Size T. Technically I should be doing um standard def dot h for that. String. which I wasn't including before. <laughs> a lot of the time you can get away with not including something if something else includes it, but you really don't want to do that because if that something else no like changes and no longer includes the header that you need for some other reason and then your code will stop building properly even though you didn't change anything. Uh, I have memory and yeah. Need that. So that's... Do we use, actually use file? Yeah, I do. Uh, back. Yes, okay. Do I use vector? No. How about hash functions? No, so, um, and base64? Nope. 
Oh, uh, actually, we should include G test on all of these, really. That should go there, too. Uh, string extensions? Nope. Not map. Already pulled that one in. Promise? No. Set? Like a Big sneeze. Okay. Let's just make sure I put that in the make file. I did. Okay, build. Man, cold suck. <laughs> so it's not so bad, 400 lines. And we're down to 8,600. So we've gotten 1,000 lines down. Okay, what's next? Yeah, they. I don't like, I don't like having a cold. Okay, player creation. Oh wait, I was gonna throw, I was gonna go through and uh, fix all the names, right? Write new configuration when um, start reconfiguration committed. There we go. Set re set next configuration when start reconfiguration committed. Do not set configuration if start reconfiguration is old. Replace configuration when new finish reconfiguration committed. Do not advance configuration when old finish reconfiguration committed. Unset next configuration when finish reconfiguration committed. No, I need more words than those. The underscores are to at least make it easier for the eye, easier on the eyes. Single reconfiguration change when finish reconfiguration committed. I need to review some of these old use cases too because uh, my understanding of how to use the raft consensus algorithm is is has changed since then. So like these use cases might be overly complex. The first thing we did with raft consensus was deal with configuration changes. So probably didn't do it perf didn't do it as well as I could have. You don't feel like it, you test manually. Yeah, I, I, I say it, it de it's... Whether or not you test and how you test depends on a lot of factors. I tend to think that if the bigger something grows, the more you're going to want tests because without them, you'll paint yourself into a corner a lot of times where... Um, it won't be until really late that you figure out that you made a, a huge mistake in the design. Oh, is the kitty getting down? Are you getting down already? Are you cold? There he goes. It's going over to his heating pad. Beast cam off. Yeah, you don't. You, sometimes you won't know that um, the design is bad until um, to uh, until later. Whereas, where if you if you're if you're aggressively isolating use cases you start to feel the pressure of a bad design in that the use case becomes really complex or difficult to 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 um to arrange and i've already run that run into that multiple times with this game and it's made make me stop and think oh yeah this where this uh, th set of three things should be three separate things i test separately not one combination of things it's the act of for if you if you make yourself write a test the the act of constructing the test kind of validates is it testable and is is it testable in a small enough uh, piece. So if if what you're making is a huge glob of spaghetti code, you'll find that you can't test just one small part of it without running the whole thing. And um, then when you try to write a test and you realize I can't write a test for this, it's like stuck to a whole bunch of other things. 
then it kind of it kind of illuminates a, be, a, a design flaw or where your design could could be improved. If you can write tests that like are nice and concise and fit within a within a within a page of code like this, then probably your your that part of your design is pretty good. Especially if you don't have a mock, mock if you don't have to mock too many things. Here right here I'm only mocking the journal to test the executor. So we're pretty good. Um, but in the co I know aspects in the coordinator are still pretty bad. <laughs> Reduce unintended breaks. Yeah. Yeah, so you... Um, when the pieces are small as to test independently, then um, they're um, better understood. And, and so you can anticipate that things are going to break. And you really want to fix things as early as possible. The longer you have a design flaw or a bug, the further it gets, the more, the more of a mess it's going to make for you. Okay, I like this. Let's move on. Uh, player creation. Okay. What to name it? How about just account creation? So then... Um, Let's take subs, which is relatively small file, and copy and call it account creation. And I go in here and do account creation. Have to do with creating new player accounts. And then um, this becomes account creation. Actually, I don't know why I did that, because I'm just going to end up deleting all this. Go to the legacy and pick out the tests that are related to account creation. So, success, name taken, name taken, insensitive, email taken. That's it so far. Thank you for that follow. And by the way, hello is Matt. How are you doing? Player creation email all address taken. Oh, I accidentally dragged the mouse there. Player creation name taken match case insensitive not exact. Player creation name taken exact match. Rename this to account creation, and we're almost done, I think. Uh, well, thank you for that follow. Hey there, code's met. Is Matt? Hi, Matt. Who are you? <laughs> Doing well, writing tests? Yeah, I'm cleaning up tests. This one is going to need more work because um, it doesn't fit on one page. Probably will take things like that and reduce it down to one line because what is what this is doing is setting up a pre-existing user in, in the game with a certain name and email address. Actually, why are we doing that? Oh, I see what I did wrong. This is technically part of the act. If this is the command we're executing, then we're asserting that all these things are good. Actually, this we do need to have all the these are there are a lot of side effects to creating an account. So this is probably as good as I can make it. You're in chat but no audio. Okay. No problem. Code spent. Intense testing soundtrack. <laughs> Developing one for the last couple of years. So glad to see others using it. Uh, working on a moo. What a, what a, what does MOO stand for? Multiplayer online omnivore. <laughs> I'm gonna go with uh, the genre for mine is mud. Multi-user dungeon. It's a classic. Old school name, just like me. All right. Let's look for more account creation tests. There might not be any more.
Yeah, there might not be any more. Oh, I missed the slash me. You're writing test to the Doom Eternal soundtrack? <laughs> Sounds cool. I think I'm moving on to the next group. Password reset. Password reset. Ah, oh, yeah, so take the... Ah. Password reset. Password reset has to do with resetting the passwords of player accounts. Okay, what from legacy do we want to pull? All of these, right? Set password reset token, reset password correct token. These ones, right? So pull those out, paste them there. Hold on. I might have forgotten to put under... No, I did put underscores in all these tests, right? Okay, never mind. These ones I have not yet, though. Password reset. Set. Password reset token. Reset password correct token. Reset password have not yet consented to latest policy. Actually, this probably should go into the policy consent section, right? Let me mark this. To do. Should probably put this in the policy consent group. Reset password does not create character entity it does not create character entity if there was one. This should probably go in um, a different group as well, right? Data migration? This one's sort of on the, I'm on the fence with this one. The The use case is password reset, but the, what it's actually checking for is that it doesn't create a new character entity. Let's leave it here. Reset password creates character entity if there was none. Yeah. I don't know about these two tests. Maybe I should mark that I'm not sure about this. To do this and the next test might not be long here. It's a mixture of use cases. Password reset and data migration, really. So, Apollo, why are you asking um, me or someone else? If you're asking me, then um, I don't. Mine doesn't have a story yet, but um, it's it's online there. I'm mostly working on an engine for a mud. Probably it will be Tolkien-esque, or you know, like Ultima, where there's a mixture of um, Fantasy and ma you know, magic, that kind of thing. Cool. Yeah, I'm inspired by Ultima, so that kind of game. And that kind of story. But I really haven't gotten that much into any kind of story writing, because I've been spending the whole, the whole time so far just building up the engine for this. Okay, I think I'm done with that. Changing password. I wonder if I can pull those two together. No, let's keep them separate. So password reset, um, change password. 
Actually, let's... Let's do password management. Actually, if I do password management, then maybe password... No, password reset's already long. Or maybe not. Let me combine these two into... There's a password management. Management. Setting, re setting, resetting, changing. Yeah, so, um, delete that. Call this password management. Have to do with setting, changing, and resetting the passwords of player accounts. There we go. Yours is sci-fi? Yeah, so mine's fantasy, magic, that kind of thing. Uh, yours is sci-fi, so that's different enough. What are the acronyms? I know, I don't know exactly what MOO stands for, but... Apollo I said MOO is a type of MUD. MUD is multi-user dungeon. Uh, where's my... I don't have a Chrome window up today. That's, that's why I can't find it. So. Multi-user real-time virtual world, combining the elements of role-playing games, hack and slash, player versus player, interactive fiction, and online chat. And they've been around for decades, because the first MUDs were um, in the 70s and 80s. So, really old, really old games. Object-oriented, huh? Interesting. Okay, so in this password management, which I need to update here, we'll pull in the uh, ones for changing and removing and adding. It's all of these two. Password management. Change password, wrong server client IDs. Add password success. Remove password incorrect old hash. Remove password correct old hash not linked to Twitch. Remove password correct old hash. Ah. There we go. Correct. Now change password incorrect old hash. Change password correct old hash. <sighs> okay. Let's build it. Tests, that's right. We're doing tests, hand hand pans. I'm uh, actually cleaning up the tests I already had. So um that they can be better maintained. This, all of these tests for the executor component of my game were all piled into one file that was almost 10,000 lines long, so way too big. What I messed up something important here. Um, it should be? Wait, what's wrong here? That's C++. Yeah. CPP++. What? What? Oh, yeah. This meant this name got messed up. This should be password reset token. And it's a search replace problem. Now what? Oh, I screwed it up while I was trying to fix it. T there. Now what? Hold on, what? <laughs> Line 44 again? Oh, password management token is wrong. That's password reset token. Oh, Node.js, which is JavaScript. 
I use JavaScript too, but I only use it on the front end of my game. And I've been logged out due to inactivity, so I can't show my game. Logging through Twitch again. So yeah, the front end of my game is in JavaScript, and um, it's a React app. Node.js I use for locally testing it. But um, once it's deployed, it's just a website. Actually, let me close that so I don't get logged out due to inactivity. How did I screw up all these things? 383. Oh, I, that's from key names, right? Key names. There we go. No, we don't have to re-render it every time we move. Let me demonstrate. So I'll do this with the test environment so I don't accidentally leak credentials. So pull this up F12 and um, get ready to show the network tab. Log in Tiger Brush. So the very first time um, that um, your screen loads, it does give you all the information to draw, and that shows up in this one. It's a sprite list. So it gives you a list of 28 sprites, which is all these tiles, right? But then from then on, whenever you move, you'll get an, um, a delta. So you get a sprites update. It tells you um, what, how many, um, how many um, units to shift the camera, left, right, up, or down. And then which old sprites can be removed, which existing sprites can be moved in place, and which ones are new that need to be added. So, you know, if, as you move to the right here, the ones on the left fall away and the ones on the right become visible. And if I were to teleport in the game like that, then it gives me a whole new set of sprites. It's pretty nice if you prefer React. Uh, the um, streamer that I recommend, if you want to know more about that stuff, made the... Um, Chat overlay above my head, CM Griffin. He knows Vue, React, Angular, and Elixir, and all that stuff. And whenever people ask him, like, what, what does he prefer? His answer is always, it depends on the job. So it really depends on what you're doing. Yeah, so all of this app is made in React, except for this, which I use Phaser.js for. And um, that Phaser.js either uses WebGL or Canvas, depending on if you have um, hardware acceleration on or not. Yeah, so my game communicates to the um, backend server through WebSockets, and every message right now is a JSON message because it's extremely easy to debug th that way. And um, in the future, it might be binary. Right now, it's, J it's um, JSON. I can leave that running. Cool, so it's building again. We're continuing to break up the test. So each one of these should be like no more than like 1,200 lines. So right now they're, they're a good size. That's 148, 399, 67, 538, and then the is in this legacy. And that started at 9,600. Now we're down to 8,000. Glad you don't have to worry about that stuff. Yeah. I have fun worrying about that stuff. That's my deal. I like to make stuff from scratch and um, I've had so much fun making almost everything here from scratch. This one is um, player profiles, right? Let's just call it profile. Profile it has to do with a player account profiles. Okay, remove all of these copies. Facebook can, ha can handle all of what? Oh, you mean all of the um, libraries? So like, just use, if you use React, you're letting Facebook worry about um, handling all the um, underlying stuff, yeah? Profile, changing names, changing profiles, all of this stuff goes here. Change profile, wrong server ID. 
these. Change profile failure email address taken. And that got, uh, that, that P got chopped off there. That one already has space, uh, under, underscores. Change profile failure name taken. Change profile by admin success. Uh, I'm having trouble, dra I'm dragging instead of clicking. It really gets in the way of doing multi-cursor. All right. Oh, I get it. Right, so you're not talking about React, you're talking about that you're on top of Facebook's Messenger. Your game is on that, yeah. So, yeah, you'll have a lot, a lot easier time than, than I will. Because you'll have a lot more stuff done for you. Did I add this? I did not. Profile. Build. Yeah, all API based. That's um, an excellent way to to go, I think. If if you don't really care about making stuff yourself, just using an existing platform like that is an awesome idea. Cool, so that's another 300 lines. What's next? Okay, so there's a little bit, there's a few tests on account, what was the name I gave it? Account deletion. So account creation, account deletion. This has to do with, with deleting old player accounts. Remove that, and then from legacy, I'm copying destroy player stuff. Destroy player, wrong server client. I wonder why I have tests with wrong server client IDs, because that shouldn't happen. It shouldn't matter. I don't know why I have those tests. <laughs> Need to think about that. It shouldn't be possible for the command to come in with the wrong server client ID, unless, I guess they do, they issue a command and then log out. But then why does it matter if they logged out? Yeah, it doesn't really matter. We could just do it anyway. They might have said, please delete my account, goodbye, and not wait for the answer. Account creation, account deletion. Turns out blind people love it, really? So you must have had to do a bunch of stuff for um, accessibility then. Or does Facebook take care of that for you? I haven't done anything for access accessibility at all. I haven't even done uh, mobile support yet. I figure I, I do uh, accessibility and mobile support once I get enough people who actually want it. <laughs> Does Lambda function the same way in C++ versus C Sharp? Kind of. So, in C Sharp, you have to declare a delegate type, right? You'd have to say delegate, um, like int my callback type. Or, I don't know. Can, is there void in C Sharp? I can't remember. I think there is. Let's just say int foo, right? And then... Um, Am I getting delegates and lambdas confused? Okay, forget forget that. Um, I'll just tell you. I'll just show you what a lambda is in C plus plus. So actually, I have a whole bunch of them. I just I just search for them. So there you go. That's a lambda. This is a function that will set that flag to true and set that promise when you call it, and it's it's packaged up into a variable called task that we can then post it. And what post does is it takes that task, which is, um, this is the formal type of a lambda, so it's standard function. You say what it returns and what, if any, it has for arguments. But you can, yeah, you can take it and you can assign it, and then later um, you can call it like it's a function. Like that.
That that's more of what it looks like in JavaScript. So maybe yeah, C sharp it looks more like JavaScript, whereas C plus um, plus, it's this. This is the the um. This is the syntactical hint when you have a lone square open bracket, and that signals that this is a um, capture list. Then um, then you have the there you could have a parameter list and then you have a body, just like you'd have in um. JavaScript or C sharp. So instead of the arrow, it's the capture list that is the si signal. Yeah, that's why I started thinking um, when you declare the type, you say delegate in C sharp. In C, it's standard function. Um, where was that? When in post, we could see it. Standard function is the C rough equivalent to a C sharp delegate. Delegate is just a fancy word for a function. Usually it's a object which also an object which is also a function. In other words, it's it's not just um code that you built. It has a it has a presence as a variable in your code somewhere. So in this case, like it can be assigned and then later called as if it was a function, because it's also an object. So yeah, delegate is just a fancy word for a function that and that's usually also an object. A function pointer is not necessarily a delegate, is it? I guess I guess it would be. But a function is not necessarily a delegate because a function might not have a a value, like as in it, it can't assign not in in C plus plus you can't necessarily assign a function to a variable because the it has no, it has no um, storage as a as a as a variable. It's it's there's an address to it, but it's um, in your code, not um, so you can get a pointer to it, but you can't um, assign it to a variable. You can get its address and assign that to a variable, but you can't take the function itself. Yeah, so when, yeah. A delegate or a function object in C++ is is more than just the code. It's also um, a variable in your code, which um, may be because it's a variable, that means you can now pass it around and it has a type and all that good stuff. So it becomes a first class object. That's another term you might hear: first class object. If something is a first class object, that means you can pass it, you can assign it to variables, you can pass it around to other functions, you can store it in structures, that kind of thing. So function objects became first class objects when um, they made this type in C++11. And then um, backed it up with the syntax form, um, the lambda syntax, this stuff. All right. And how are you doing today, by the way, Mr. Muffles? Mr. Mavels is a, is a friend of the stream. He's also an occasional streamer, working on a game in Unity. It's like a Metroidvania type game. And then he hello Apollo Y. I'm passing out some highs that that are long overdue. Sander Copy, hello. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm suffering from a cold today, but um, I'm persevering. Account deletion. We're done with this one, right? So the next one was um, logging in. Actually, did I build this? I did. Uh, let's look at the... Make sure I can still run them. I won't be able to run them together, unfortunately, now, because they're split into subgroups. So now executor... I can't run all the executor tests in one click, but I can run them um, just by clicking down the row here. So I didn't break anything, good. So next would be logging in. So executor tests login, I guess. All right. Sure, take this one, duplicated login. I can spell. Do you have any resources for helping understanding intricacies behind building a balanced scoring system? Currently, my, all my scores are best effort with no real basis 
which makes the score pretty arbitrary. Scoring system, scoring system. So, Code Spence said they were not in audio, right? So, I'll, I'll type it while I say it. I'm not... I'm not exactly sure what you mean by scoring. Probably you're scoring a brand name based on number of metrics, like we're online. Oh, you have audio. Okay, so I won't, I won't bother typing it. Um... So like, is that like w applying weights, like weight weighting? Uh, how what was it? I didn't think of the words that I've heard used before. Basically, assigning values along some kind of dimension that you care about, and then ordering, ordering, putting them in a certain order, so that you can pick out the outliers or the average or the middle or something like that, right? I don't know of any resources to help you other than just the background mathematics involved. Or, or did, I guess it would depend on the domain. Like if you're, yeah, you said you're scoring some, based on metrics. It is helpful in itself? Well, that's good. Yeah, tough question. I would guess that there's some math, there's obviously math involved, so you'd probably want to know, like, basic statistics and um like you i don't know if you're looking for like comp like computing knowing how knowing what a standard deviation it is and being able to compute it might be useful or or the variance because then you can you can identify what are outliers versus what's the norm but then you have to you have to really know the the context like what's important is word length important you know, how important is it versus other things? Rank scoring system algorithm, league scoring. Oh, there you go. If domain is available, add 10. So if it's something someone else has already done work to measure, then I would rely on their research and their notes and their documentation and stuff. But if not, I mean, you could always just... Um, Make guesses and then you know science. Use science. Run ex run experiments. See if adding ten does something or it helps you get the answer you want. Uh, this is login now, right? Login. All right. One more of these groups, and then I have to take a quick break to use the restroom. So. The legacy, here we go, login. Actually, this two factor auth. I wonder if login should include two factor auth. Maybe. Like, I might include that as part of login. Ooh, I scored a 153 out of 200. Nice. <laughs> Above average? What's the average, though? You want, you'd want the average to be 100, right? And you'd probably want to graph it and get a nice bell curve. Oh, what am I doing? I'm supposed to be looking for login, right? Yeah. All right, all these. Paste. All right. These are all the tests that have to do with players logging into the game through clients. You recently updated the site for your MUD? Want to see it? Uh, I can look at it later. You, you can always post the link in chat for other people to look at. I'd love to, love to look at it later, sure. Uh, correct hash. Okay, login. Log in correct hash not logged in already. Hey there, FD God. How are you doing? Oh, an epic unknown is here. Hey there. How are you, sir? Actually, there I go again, assuming gender. My apologies. Just say, how are you doing today, program? I recently watched Tron Legacy. I have to watch these old movies because my kids will say things like, when I ask, how, you remember Tron? They're like, 
No, that's an old movie. I we don't we haven't seen those old movies. I'm like, you haven't seen the original Tron? Okay, we have to sit down and watch it right now. <laughs> so um in Tron we say um greetings programs instead of sir, ma'am, that kind of thing. Oh cool. Text space. That's a nice um website. Address? Let me um, put that in my notebook to look at later. There we go. Looks like the compiler actually found a way to reuse a local variable. Yeah, compilers can be sneaky. If they... If they search and find closures within the code that don't overlap, they can... Not only reuse the variable, but they could they can reuse the same stack location for different variables, which can be very confusing to a debugger. It's like, how did this variable change? I I, I changed a different variable. It's like, well, they actually have the same address because there's nothing in your code that assumed that they would have a different address, and it was just better to have them th um, share. Sharing is caring and all that, right? It's more like you can share the address because it, we, you were just renting that memory, right? And not reserving it for all time. It's got a nice ring to it. Yeah, he was saying it's all, or they were saying it's all within... Um, Facebook Messenger platform. So pro is that it does a lot of things for you. The con is that you're kind of dependent. And, um, you can't leave that environment of Facebook Messenger. Actually, that probably mean that will probably mean I won't be able to play it because I've given up on Facebook. Wow, I have a lot of login tests. I think I'm near the end, though. The temporary int that was returned early in some cases, and after that was done, there was another int that was used for other things in return. Yeah, yeah, the compiler can be pretty smart. It can deduce that they can share the same memory because there, it, it can basically deduce that it's impossible for or that the programs ex all, always will execute um, the same way and have the same side effects, whether they're sure the same address or not. So yeah, if the compiler can convince itself through proof that that it uh, it can do that, it, it it will if you have it optim opt optimization cranked up. Oh, you don't use Facebook either. I understand at least one reason why not to use Facebook, <laughs> but it, it, we get into politics, right? Key, okay, this one relies on um, key names. I like Facebook's React framework. I just don't like Facebook, the plat, the social platform anymore. Okay, this one used ha okay, so this one's relying on hash functions. TOTP SHA one. Okay. So legacy had these includes, right? How many of them do we need? We probably don't need that one. Do we need HMAC? No. Do we need SHA-2? No. So just those two? I don't know. Do you think Discord really is universal? I start to think that things are universal, and then I talk to people who have never heard of Discord before. They're like, what's Discord? Oh, that's game constants. I remember this one. So this includes game constants. Like, we all start to assume that everyone knows what Twitch is, right? But um, I know I know some people who have no idea what Twitch is. I'll say, oh, I stream on Twitch. So, like, what's that? 
<laughs> and then you run into people who like assume you have a Facebook account. You're like, I don't use Facebook. You don't use Facebook? <laughs> don't have a clue what Discord. Yeah, I didn't know what Discord was until a few years ago. All right. Let me guess, I gotta scan for my tests again. Is it only a few years old? I thought it was older. How old is Discord? Discord Wikipedia. Oh. It's only four years old? I'm actually surprised. The platform is pretty mature for being only four years old. Huh. Learn something new every day. I just assumed it was older than that. Okay. So... Should be able to find these now. Oh, what happened there? What the heck? What happened there? Oh, I think I know. <laughs> well, that's easy. this is easy to fix. I must have done... This must be a multi-cursor thing. Yeah, the double underscores probably are all single underscore. Yeah, that's that's what that was. I was surprised too, Jackamus. I thought for sure, Discord was older than four years. I would have I would have guessed more like ten years. That's how mature it feels like to me. All right, how are we doing on legacy? Okay, good. So it used to be over nine thousand, over nine thousand lines long. Yeah, you don't think Discord is mature? TS Trust, you have to try, uh, what is it, Skype for Business once. Skype for Business is like horrible, like miles and miles behind Discord. Yeah. To me, mature equates to like stable, feature-rich. Skype is neither feature rich nor stable. <laughs> you think it's dead, but I know two big companies that depend on it solely for all their internal communication. Yeah. So the company I used to work for, Qualcomm, they use it everywhere. It's and and like uh when I started using Discord um after learning about it through Twitch and other things, I kept going to people within the company saying, why aren't we using Discord? It's so much better than Skype for Business garbage. And it's just, they just have so much of their infrastructure invested on these like em enterprise platforms that they are sold to from Microsoft. And yeah, so not only the company I was at, but another, another, co another big company I know of that um, someone in my family works at, they also use Skype for Business. And I, so they see, I see them occasionally using it. I'm like... I feel bad for you that you have to use Skype for business. <laughs> or Skype. Yeah, Skype for business. It used to be called Microsoft Links, I think, right? Or Link. L-Y-N-C. All right. I think I'm going to take a quick break. So I've done this much splitting up, and this was roughly 3,000 lines. So... I'm one third of the way through, and I'm two hours in. So this this means it'll probably take another four hours. Oh well, it has to be done. Good old link, yeah. I'm gonna take a quick break, but I'll be right back. So let me set the timer. How long do I think I need? Uh, let's say three minutes. I'm starting a three-minute break, okay? I'll be right back. Here's your chance to get up and stretch and all that. Okay, making sure my timer's working. I'll be right back.
Sorry about that. Maybe I should have something playing in the background when I'm gone. It makes it very quiet, and then it gets awkward. All right. The cat is, like, sleeping on his heating pad now in the other room. Cluster status is next. Let's keep going. Jeopardy music, yeah. Or maybe the music from uh, The Witness. What do you think, Endurn? Would I get in trouble if I played that music, that soundtrack? That's all classical music, right? It's probably a uh, public domain now. And look up what, um, what the name of that is. Yeah, the challenge one. See you, Apollo Eye. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, this was a cluster. So... Cluster CPP. Have to do with the game cluster and its uh, status. Just sing it in chat. In the Hall of the Mountain King, is that it? Play it? Are you sure? Hall of the Mountain King. Eighteen seventy five, so it's it should be open source, right? What are the rules? I should I really shouldn't play it on sc on stream. Uh wait a minute. The way I have it set up if I do this in Firefox, I can listen to it without anyone else hearing it. And then I can make sure that it's the right tune. Yep, that's it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I should have I should have that on the um Yeah. I'll have to I'll have to make sure that I don't get copyright dinged or whatever. I'm I'm super paranoid about that. That's one reason why I don't play music on my stream. Yeah, you have to be careful about it. So a composition, I have to find a composition that's not copyrighted, but that's in the public domain. Sounds like a good side project. Okay, so this is Cluster. And it's like if I'm late, then the stream explodes or something. No. <laughs> Just play the challenge, the music comes free with it. That's true. That is true. Yep, it's hardcore. It's all, um, it's doubly hardcore. Tra, because I have, um, the C++ written from scratch. So, um, I'm not basing it off of an engine like Unreal. Uh, why did I put cluster status next if I have logging log out, or did I intend to put log out in the same place as log in? I should make that another subsystem, logging out. So cluster status is client report, right? So let's put that here. <laughs> no, you much props for you for doing PHP. I think that's just as hardcore as C++, really. So yeah, much respect for you to be doing PHP. C++, this is just another kind of beast, you know. You can mus use music from Bandcamp. Yeah, CM Griffin does also, right? So if there's a Bandcamp composition of uh, In the Hall of the Mountain King, maybe I can... 
use that. Okay, so and this one needs key names. Whoops. Key names. Yeah, I, I don't know how to do PHP. It PHP scares me. Oh, it's done linking. What am I thinking? I'm like thinking it's still going. Okay, logging out. So log in, now log out. Log, log out. Have to do with players disconnecting their clients from the game. Alright, so this is log out. Yeah, so what I'm doing today is breaking up this huge test fixture that started out as 9,000 lines, so it's way too big. I'm breaking it into 25 odd pieces based off of different categories of use cases uh, because the executor component of my game is sort of like a, a central dispatch point for making changes in the game. It itself probably could be broken up into its various pieces, and then, a, then the central central part being the dispatcher could be its own separate piece as well. Right, so these tests... I fall into this trap of, of writing code not looking to when it's getting out of hand and you know not, not stopping and refactoring soon enough. So I really shouldn't have let this thing get to 9,000 lines. <laughs> Thank you for the follow. No point in voicing your audience to listen to whatever you're listening to. Yeah, so what we're talking about is playing music while um, I'm on the Be Right Back screen. And just to be funny, have it be something that um, gets more and more urgent when the, count, when the timer run, winds down. Kubernetes, is that... Oh, K8S, yeah, yeah, Kubernetes. Log out clear login token. Oh, was that not clear, TS just? Yeah, we we're talking about like the BRB screen. It was too silent, it's too quiet. It's just a uh, an image only. So adding adding some kind of countdownish audio to that. You're playing the witness, not paying attention. I got it. Okay, base sixty four. We need that one. Um, this probably doesn't need hash, right? Oh, it does. Oh, no, but it doesn't need those headers. Okay. Oh, he does? Does he not care that it's an infringement? He might not be uploading his VODs to YouTube. When I, when I'm done with my, um, or when... Either once or twice a month, I will... Oh, that's not true either. Either once every week or every two weeks, I upload all, all the VODs that I have to um, YouTube so they don't get deleted. And if I had copyright stuff in there, it could, I, could be get, I could get a... Um, not a strike, but you get, like, claimed. You get a copyright claim. And I'd rather not have to worry about that. Okay, we're good, right? Build. Yeah, if he doesn't care about VODs and uploading to YouTube, then, then it's not a problem, right? Okay, tickets is next, I think. Copy this, paste, tickets. Tickets. Have to do with the in-game ticketing system. So all of that goes away. These are all ticketing system. Update mod event and all that is the ticketing system. Paste. At bot event. Update mod event ticket does not exist. Can't stop playing copyright music when you're live, right? What do you mean? 
Twitch music removal is getting more aggressive. Clips made in segments that are muted get insta deleted. Are they are they also using filters now? Because I could have sworn I was watching a VOD and it, it was marked that certain sections were muted. And I was playing through the section that looked like it should have been muted and it wasn't muted, but I didn't hear any music. I mean, if the filters are really good, they could filter out the music from the speech and just leave you with the talking and none of the music. That, that would be perfect, right? Sure, you don't have the music, but at least it's not completely muted. They have that in YouTube. That's actually one way that um, I eventually had to just give up. On one of my VODs, it got a copyright claim, even though there's no music at all. Some douchebag um, record company um, put a claim on my video, even though there's no revenue anyway, saying that portions of my video were, were on their weird music. And I'm like, I don't, there's no music at all. So I appealed it and then they upheld the copyright claim. So then I noticed YouTube has this feature where you can tell YouTube just to strip the music out. So I said, okay, let's see what this does. And I did that. And I listened to the section again that had the copyright claim. And it's like they applied a low pass filter on it. So you can still hear me talking, but it was slightly muffled. And I'm like, you know, that's kind of an interesting idea. Like something that would strip out the music and leave the talking is a nice compromise. Sure, like remove the music, but keep the rest of the content, which is not related to the music. And yeah, I was wondering if Twitch is starting to play around with that kind of thing. Conditional recording. Oh, does Slobs have have that where you can have multiple audio streams, so you can make the uh, music you can make the music optional. Oops, I messed that one up. Update mod event username, and I'm done. Right? Oh boy, I'm getting tired of this refactoring already. <laughs> Oh, Twitch VODs have had filters for years. It usually mutes and degrades the quality. I thought it always just muted it. But if they have a non-muting filter, I, ha I hadn't heard of I haven't. I had not seen it before. But yeah, the other day I thought I, I thought I was I, I thought that it was using that. I'm like, oh, this is cool. So next is mail. Mail. This has to do with sending email. The only thing I do with mail, mail in my game is if you um, if you actually put your email address in there, and then you lose your password, you can use it to reset your password. But it's completely optional right now. Probably will always be. So this is going to be a short set of tests because we just queue and DQ. Oh, you can upload it. I never thought about that, I, but you're right. You can upload stuff to Twitch, right? Why would you do that? Why would you upload stuff to Twitch anyway? Why not just upload it to YouTube? So if you didn't have music going, what did YouTube filter out? I'm guessing it's a computer algorithm. Ran my VOD through some kind of frequency domain analysis and said and 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 saw and thought that it heard music. And so I said, okay, strip it out. And then it just did a low-pass filter on it. And it's like, okay, the music is now gone. <laughs> Fortunately, it's only happened once. It should happen zero times because I never have music. Actually, that's not true. Sometimes when I do that, I have that little spiel that goes... Hold on a sec. All right. Is this build now? Oh no, no! It was I was the only human involved. They probably had a computer program auto reject any appeal. The way it works on YouTube, at least the way it did, is that they put a claim on your video, so they get all the ad revenue that you might get, um, and then um, you can appeal it. And they'll reject the appeal, and then if you can, you can then raise the bar one more time. But they can just decide to um, give you a copyright strike. And I'm like, 
Okay, well, I guess I'm not going to win, so I'll just I'll just hit the button that says remove the music from this video that doesn't have music, and then just move on. It was it's frustrating. I was I was very mad about it. You can have you can you can do the counter notice, but they can still give you a copyright strike, and after three strikes, you're out. Yeah. I don't think the court could, I mean, the law is not in your favor for, for the DMCA. It's, um, it's in the f favor of the trolls. The YouTube is just covering their ass. They, they don't want to get involved. They're like, okay, well, what if, if someone claims something, okay, it must be theirs. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they will apply a copyright strike if you, if, if the, if the, um, claimants, up uh, uh, like says no it really is our stuff how can they i don't know they just they did so <laughs> they just said um you were playing our music i'm like i don't have music no no you are i'm like okay then remove the music i guess <laughs> and i'm just i know i'm talking to a computer program the whole time no human ever got involved i mean i'm i'm just a small like what i have like at the time i had like 20 subscribers. I mean, no one's going to give a crap about my channel. Like, YouTube doesn't care. The No one else cares. So th they're not going to have a human look at it. I guess if I get to be a big channel, sure, I might have a human look at a copyright claim, but it, the small people don't matter. It's just a fact of life. Let's see. Where do I want to... Oh, remove mod event. That ought to have been... Put under tickets. That's tickets. Yeah, they get held liable. All right. State snapshots. Yeah, okay, so snapshots is next. Snapshots. Oh, did I... What was the last one before snapshots again? Mail, okay, yeah, I already I did that one. So this is have to do with serializing and deserializing game state. Hey there, Crumpet. No, that's just, you're doing a big salute, right? <laughs> big head, yeah. He's coming into the stream with a big head. Yes, he is. See, if you just came here, Grumpa, you you probably missed my little tirade about um, uh, how the um, copyright claim strike stuff works in YouTube and how... Our computer algorithms decisions are are now more important than human decisions for small streamers. Uh, snapshots. Did Krumpa, did I tell you how one of my VODs got copyright claimed? Even though I have no music, it was claimed for music. And I appealed, and they said, and they upheld their claim. And so I just used the built-in option on YouTube that says remove the remove the music, and it went through and it for like a twenty-second long part of my vod where I was explaining something, it just applied a low-pass filter. I'm like, oh well, and it, it was barely noticeable. <laughs> it was like it's a complete waste of my time and and their computing resources and and the emails back and forth. No human was involved except for me, I'm sure. I would have loved to have heard from a human explaining like what about my video is claimed or or you know where is the music in this video you know <laughs> but there's there's absolutely no process to um have a human look at it without risking a copyright strike I'm digging the channel if they put a cop 
tells us they're not meeting their obligations. I think they're just, you know, I think they don't really care about individual content creators unless they're really big and bring them in a lot of money. So they probably have no, not a whole lot of qualms in them. Um, I mean, they've said as much, right? They'll, they'll just, they'll delete an account and forbid you to, to, to be on there for whatever reason they want. They reserve the right, right? You don't have a, you don't have a right to be on YouTube. You, it's, it's your privilege, right? It's, it's a privilege they grant you to be on their platform. Like we don't, like I, as someone who puts stuff on YouTube, I'm not paying Google or YouTube. Um, it's just all on their good graces. So really, I shouldn't be mad about it. I should be happy when they don't uh, have ridiculous copyright claims on, on my stuff. All right. Um, okay. Back to this. When I get onto tirades, I, I stop working, don't I? Mm -hmm, these ones. No one wants to see me moan and complain. I shouldn't be doing that, right? <laughs> yeah, Taylor Swift song. No, it was some... I couldn't even find the song. Like, they mentioned some album that I... It was in It was in uh, Arabic. The title was in Arabic, so I couldn't even search... I couldn't... I tried to uh, search for the Arabic title and, like, couldn't find anything. Um... Yeah, it was it was really weird. I think I was most annoyed by the fact that I was receiving email as a human from a computer program pretending to be a process involving humans. That there were it was it they have this illusion that there are other people behind the scenes but they're not it's all computer algorithms computer generated copyright claims because obviously like automating that stuff saves is more efficient right saves time and money and probably the vast majority of claims are legitimate because and and having the computer programs detect them and automatically claim them is is helping keep that stuff clean yeah that's what I was saying Crumpet. when your channel gets big enough then the humans look in it, look into things but when you're small no you're just you're um it's a pain to have to service all the small content creators so they probably just avoid it all right we're done with this one yeah I'm sorry to complain so much I shouldn't do that snapshot should be snapshots I keep having to remind myself, things like complaining, like having a negative attitude, it might feel cathartic at the time, but very few people want to hear other people complaining. We like to complain, but we don't, like, how many people actually enjoy hearing other people complain? I would think it would be a small number. Maybe if you feel sympathetic, like it happened to you, then you can say, like, yeah, me too. Happy programmer is a complaining programmer. So, yeah. I should complain about myself, and then it's more of a um, slapstick, no, slapstick? Humor? It's more humorous because I've dug, I've dug my own problems. I've created my own problems. Restore player at, oh, this is, um, these are male related. That goes in here. Male. Oh, purge mail. Here we go. Those go into mail as well. Okay. Where would restore player go in these groups? Account backup and restoration is where it would go, right? Okay. So... Just take this one, doesn't matter. Account backup. Hey there, Tim. How are you doing today? Backup. Here for a few moments. Are you beginning your afternoon stream or or working? 
you guys should check out Tim's stream. He is writing his own games in his own game engine, also in C++, and they're racing games, including Turbo Boom, for which TS Just has made a very cool trailer. Back up. So yeah, today I'm just refactoring, so I'm breaking up a huge... Used to be 9,500 line unit test, now it's down to 5,300. I'm breaking it up into, into bits so that I can better organize it. Is that what they call str stringly typed? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> hey there, ICQ freak. Let me do some waves. Wave to Tim. Gnarly Quack, hello. And Jack... Uh, Jebico. Hi. There's the teaser video. So do you prefer teaser or trailer? I guess teaser's better, right? Account backup. Because it gives you a, um, a, a, a glimpse at the game and teases you, makes you want to play it, right? Time to hang out with Dizzy? All right. Have a good weekend, then. Sneak peek. There you go. It's a sneak peek at the game. All right, there's only one test in backup right now. So next is ma metrics. Oh, I didn't put the comment up here. It has to do with the backing up and restoring of player account information. Okay, let's copy that, paste it, and call this one... I forget. <laughs> Short-term memory. Metrics. That's right. Metrics. Metrics. This has to do with collecting diagnostic information about the performance and correctness of the execution of the game. All right. The metrics-based tests are here. Accumulate matrix, account counted, these ones. Metrics build. Yeah, it is a pretty good teaser sneak peek video, I think. I wouldn't be surprised if it persists all the way to the release of the game. The only problem, Tim, right, that that uh, that you're saying is the game has taken too long to develop. It was meant to be what three or four month project. I smile and I laugh because I make that same mistake all the time. I think something will take a stream; it takes four streams. I think something will take a year; it takes four years. The trailer shows gameplay. But the teaser also showed a little bit of gameplay too, but just from different cam camera angles. Okay, now we're getting into... These are um, entity component system related. Okay, this is a metrics one. These are all metrics related. Okay, and these are entity component system related, specifically entity management. Yes, okay. Have I been adding this to the list here? I might not have been. Let me make sure they're all on the list. Nope, some of them are missing. Backup, CPP. Cluster, config, legacy, log out is not in the list. Mail is not in the list. Metrics is not in the list. Password management is, profile is, snapshot is, subs is, tickets is not. All right. Hoping to take four months to develop the release cam has already been four months now. It still needs a 
speed more, spend more to wrap up and polish. Yeah. Well, it's, it's not that bad then. At least it's not one year into a four month project. So it could be worse. Right? The cat just walked past. Where are you going? He's lurking. Uh, how much more do I have? 5,000? Not even halfway done yet. Just so much to do. The beast hunts. Yeah, well, Tim, it was at 9,500. This is why I'm refactoring today. It's too big. <laughs> too many tests are in this file. Uh... Call this one entity management. Entity management, including temporaries. Okay. Add it to the list here. Mail is entity management. Have to do with creating, destroying, and modifying entities and game entities and their components. Entity management. All right, things that go into entity management. Actually, there's going to be a lot of them. These, all of these actually. These ones that have inventory in them are special though. These ones that don't have inventory in them are um, the generic ones. So I want those there. Skip the inventory related ones. These ones go into the generic one, right? Add, remove, create temporary, destroy temporaries. Create when did not exist. Do not create when it exists. Yeah, all of these. Okay. Let me put underscores under all the test names uh, between words. When it did not exist. Create temporary client entity. Uh, I'm so bad at smashing the beginnings of words here. I think it's because I go too fast. Some of them already have the underscores because those are recent mo recent additions. They made the change in style a while back to, um, especially for the long test names, to put underscores between the words so that it's easier on the eyes. Because the test names are are actually important, more important than normal variable or function names because they, they're kind of the, the title for the test. And my eyes will be looking at that look when I'm searching for certain tests. Okay, what else? Character move off on... Uh, those actually could go in the logout tests, right? Yeah. Logout. Here we go. Character marked gone on logout. Character move off on logout. That was actually an inter um, a fun bug, actually. It used to be that if you're in my game and you started moving and you held down the movement key and then closed the window, your character would be teleported to the logged out zone and but continue moving and you'd move off in, into a direction and there's nothing to stop you because there's no, no tiles in that zone. And so you'll you eventually be like at x equals five thousand something, and then you log in and you'd be way out, way outside the map. <laughs> really, do you like the concept? Just never found a way to really get into practice. Yeah, it's tough to get into. It's tough to stick to. I've gotten into it and stuck to it, but the pro the 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 more insidious problem is when you start writing tests that are too long, like this. So I do two mistakes, Tim. I do not make enough helper functions like 
this kind of thing happens in like a dozen of my tests, but I just and I was just lazy and copy pasted this setup, right? This should probably be in one function that has a better name that explains what it's doing. This one's creating the input component for a player, right? So this should be in a function called create player input component. And the other problem I have is that the um, tests are not small scale enough. They're they're testing too many things. So there are too many, um, there's too much to set up, there's too much to actually do, too much to, to check for. And so the tests don't fit in one screen. Um, I guess the most problem number three is the one where the um, I pile too many tests into the same file and it becomes like impossible to find things now. But that's what I'm solving today. Break them up into small enough pieces, then um, make the tests um, leverage common helper functions that have names so that they're they're smaller and easier to read and then try to make the test cases themselves simpler so like if a component has two subcomponents break those two subcomponents out have those tested separately and then either mock or leverage those already tested subcomponents to test the the other the third one so um that's the trap I fall into, is not doing those things. And so the tests get long and unreadable and difficult to manage. I still benefit from the fact that they do make sure everything's still working, and if I break something, they start to fail. So there's some benefit, but I'm not getting the full benefit. It's not scalable also. To make it scalable, I have to keep it clean. Uh, let's put duplicate entity in entity management. Another example of a test that's too big, entity management. Duplicate entity. It looks beautiful, but it's too long. It's hard to read all this stuff. Oh, these are all suffering from not having the key names that are included. It's been a while since I've built, right? I'll probably have compiler errors. No? Oh, wow. Cool. When you're trying to simulate drivetrain ac accurately, you had lots of tests, but your confidence that your test had the correct results always made you wonder. You, over time, you, you, you gain confidence in it because it's not until your tests help you catch bugs that you start to build the confidence and, and they're like, oh, your tests are actually finding the bugs. And when the test, like when your test pass at first, you're like skeptical. It's like, did it really pass because everything's working or did it just pass because it's not actually catching the bug? Um, there's always a chance of that, but more often than not, it's passing because there's no bug. And that your test is actually of value confirming that. And then it gives you confidence that everything is working. Yeah, the test can be wrong, but... On the positive side of that, when you find that they're wrong, you just fix the tests, and so you're always going in a positive direction, at least for one test point of view. There are the failing tests. You sus yeah. I always suspect the test first, and if I can't think, find anything wrong with the test, then I'll look at the code. Actually, that's not true. I think they're both, they're both suspects in my mind until I look at them. I have to call, I'm going to have to call it soon because I, I need to rest a little bit. I have a cold. My head's starting to get stuffy. I don't know if I'll come back for the afternoon stream or not. It depends on how I feel later. Okay, this is, a lot of this is my data migration, right? And inventory. Did I skip the chat stuff? Oh no, it's just buried in here, right? Yeah, here's the chat stuff and the and the Twitch integration, just in a different order. Yeah, hopefully it gives you confidence that the test is correct. Yeah, that's the that's the point. That's the intent, right? Okay. Um. Let's just make one called, oh, I didn't want to copy legacy. 
delete the legacy copy. I want to copy like login or something. Call that items. Have to do with the management of items in the game. So. Modify component full inventory, delta, item in inventory, all that stuff. Why? What the heck? I was scrolling and it wasn't moving the, the window. That was funny. Yeah, that's what we want to avoid is that false sense of security. Yeah. If you're looking to get into TDD and it's not sticking at first, it could also be that you're trying to test everything. So another way to get into it a little bit more easily is just test the most basic and fundamental and smallest bits of your code. So you might have something that... Like, for example, I have this hash function, right? This is the SHA-1 hash function. So I could just write tests just for this. And those, I actually have those, right? And those are, um, it's pretty small. It says, like, given this string, here's the hash code, right? And you just make tests, you just test that only. And don't worry about testing everything in your game or your program. But just test the things that are like very, very straightforward. When you have something that's an input, what should the output be? And then you just have a simple loop expecting the output to be what you get back from calling the thing, right? Um, and then just, just stick to those. And then once you get comfortable with that, then start to test more difficult to test things. That's what you're doing, writing one-off tests when you feel it fits well? Yeah. Yeah, so like WebSocket. You might just test, you might first start with the WebSocket just testing that the masking algorithm works or the, the mask computation and then maybe the construction and deconstruction of frames, but then um, not bother to test, to test the rest. And that's perfectly fine. I think getting, getting the habits down is in the long run more important than getting, every, getting everything tested from day one. All right. This should go in um, profile. Profile. Change profile from admin. Ignore server and client IDs. There. Player tile change results in tile ID change. Shouldn't that also go in profile? Yeah. Player tile change results in tile ID change. This is in the snapshotting system. <clears throat> A long one. Command ex executed while publishing snapshot created should be executed on snapshot state. That's a really long one. <laughs> Masking data migration. I don't have. I don't have bins for those yet. Character container interaction broken on login on logout. So that. I think we want to go, I want to put that in log out. Character still marked gone on log out if already gone. Uh, I don't remember what that was testing, but that should go in log out also. Character still. Marked, gone, on, logout, if, already gone. What was I doing here? 
set up a character which is marked as not logged in anymore, then we do the logout command. It should still be marked gone. And there must have been a bug that this was um, um, reproducing. Character marked no longer gone and login went gone previously. This is the login down here. You finished it again. Need to 100% it, yeah. The TS Just, when are you going to stream it? That's what I want to know. Character not moved on login when already logged in. That's another login test. Stream the witness. You've streamed before. You can stream again. The witness. <laughs> the cat's walking by again. I don't know what he's looking for. Character marked gone on login when in logged out. Yeah. These are the, these are more login tests, right? Okay, those go to log in. <clears throat> oh, I think the cat's trying to go out the cat door that he doesn't want to go out through still because he's afraid of it. I hear him tapping on it. Try to train him to um, be able to get in and out of the house by himself through a cat door and he's scared of it. Actually, I just heard him go through it. He overcame his fears. That's good. Did I? Oh, this is password reset. I um. Oh, this is policy consent stuff. Oh, okay. Actually, these should all go together under policy consent, which I don't have yet. So let me put, just for now, let me put them back in legacy. Because I don't have a I don't have a bin to place them in for policy consent. J zero. K zero. Yeah, I'll have to end soon. Get some rest. Downtime? I didn't know stream elements had a downtime. Destroy, destroy zone. Why are these sitting here? These should go under um, entity management. Easiest remove component. Destroy zone. Okay. Mark ticket red is um, part of the ticketing system. Mark ticket red. Under time. That's the secret command, under time. <laughs> overtime. I should have an overtime command, actually. Say, Raimu, find a stopping point soon. You are over time. Yeah, none of these commands exist yet. Okay. These are data migration. More data migration. Okay, so these go, go with items. The container stuff, right? Equipment, so there we go. Okay, I've gone through the file. It's down to 2,800 lines. I could probably finish it today. But not right now. I'm gonna take a break. This is items. I just make sure it compiles and I'll check it in. There's just enough points to take. Yeah. 
Okay. Snapshots is using milliseconds. Oh, that's Chrono. We need Chrono. Build. Thank you for that follow. Let's see. What am I looking for now? Oh, this is using some advanced stuff. Oh, it's not ticketing, it's tickets. There we go. Now what? Promise. Oh, snapshots uses future. Okay. And keys as well. Okay, so one last check would be in the build system are all of the files listed. Account backup, creation, deletion, cluster, common, config, entity management, legacy. Uh, items is not listed. Legacy, login, log out, mail, metrics, password management, profile, snapshot, subs, tickets. The cat just walked by a third time. <laughs> Let me guess. Items is not going to build, right? I have a sneaking suspicion it won't build. Oh, no, it builds. Cool. So let's run them all while I check in. Okay. So this is work in progress dividing up the... Um, Executor tests. Dividing executor tests into use case groups. Okay, so still left to do. Well, it's apparent what's still left to do. It's whatever is in legacy. So commit that. All right. Run them all. Pretty sure it's going to pass everything. Meanwhile, I'm going to see who we're going to raid. Following. I'm just going to raid Adam, I think. Rele leaving, but hopefully coming back in a few more hours. I'm going to take a break and maybe do the afternoon stream if I feel like it. But right now I'm trying to fight off a cold, so I might take the rest of the day off. We'll see. At midnight your time again? Maybe. That's a big maybe. So hopefully Adam's not on the way out. Sometimes he has a um, shorter stream on Friday. Adam13531 is the creator of Botland. He's working on that right now, grinding out the tasks for the day. We're going to go raid him. And I'm going to try to get some rest and maybe come back later in a few hours. Thank you, Toulouse. Thank you very much. All right. So take care, everybody. Hope to see you again soon. Bye.